Greetings everyone and welcome to a video tutorial where I'm going to explain you how to beat the King's Indian defense with the white pieces. As you know there are many ways to play against this very good opening from Black's point of view and today we're going to be playing my new favorite the so-called Averbach system or the Averbach variation. Instead of playing the knight f3 move on this move, we're gonna start with bishop to e2, which is going to take away the opportunities for black to move the knight or the bishop to g4 or h5 squares. Black is going to be castling, and here we're going to be playing the move bishop to g5. The purpose of this move is likely to prevent the move e5 by pinning the knight to the queen. Typically, if we played a move like knight f3, e5 would work tactically, but over here, after e5, white is ready to take, and after black takes, and we take on d8, there's knight to d5, attacking the knight the second time, as well as threatening knight xc7. So we're taking the main idea of blacks away, right away. Since this is a very critical moment, and black has a variety of options, we're gonna look at the quite a few of those. Let's start at the move h6, which is so natural, simply kicking away our dark square bishop. Well, over here we can simply retreat to e3, and since we provoked the move h6, next we can play queen d2, a very well-developing move, while hitting the pawn on h6. So we're going to be developing the queen with the so-called tempo. e5 now is available, and I think this is the main move, and we're simply going to maintain the space advantage by pushing the pawn to d5. As you can see, the Black's Knight won't be able to develop naturally to the square c6. Of course, Black's hopes are to develop the Knight to c5 and to play the move a5 very often in order to provoke White's pawn move to b4 to kick away the Black's Knight away. Let's say Knight b to d7, we can play Queen d2 and hit the pawn on h6. Now, I have to take a note that Knight xc4 is a very common tactical idea which doesn't work exactly here. It seems like they're losing the piece, their idea is to play f5, and once the knight moves, they can trap our dark square bishop and win the piece back. However, unfortunately for them, we have bishop takes h6 here, and after they take our knight, they do win the piece back. However, they're left with very vulnerable king and terrible shelter near the king. So as we go back after queen to d2, it's natural for black just to be defending the pawn on h6. Now they're threatening to take on e4, therefore we're going to be playing the move g4, which is going to soften that square f5 for them, make it stronger from our point of view. Knight c5 is very natural, and our main plan over here is going to be attacking the black's king in quite a few variations. We're gonna castle queen side. You can play knight h3, perhaps knight to f2. That's a typical way of developing the knight in these positions, and then following this up with a kingside attack. As we go back, you will see that in other variations after knight e6, we very often are going to continue with the kingside attack. Say e5, the idea is almost the same, simply transferring the knight to c5 by a different route, and then we can continue with very similar plans. Another variation that we can take a look over here is the move c5, which is the main move and the likeliest move that you will see. We're going to be playing d5, solidifying our space advantage, and here I would like to take a look at two moves. They're equally popular. Let's take a look at e6 first. My recommendation is simply to play queen to d2, which is going to prevent our opponent from playing h6. E takes d5, e takes d5, we get Benoni-like structure where white has more space. Rook to e8, for example, very typical developing for both pieces, where at some point after h3, black is likely having to give up the bishop pair. So here, I think in these positions, we have static advantage. Black is prevented from enjoying space. White has this solid pawn on d5. We have two bishops. We're gonna take prophylactic measures like a4 to stop breaks like b5, and white has a long-term advantage. As we go back, the last variation that I wanna take a look, we just looked at e6. I think it's very natural for black to consider h6 over here as well. Then our bishop goes back to f4. Once again, when we're gonna be playing queen to d2, we're just going to be hitting the pawn on h6 with the so-called tempo. So the provocation is useful for white as well. e6 right now, we have d takes e6, bishop takes e6, and the main move over here is bishop takes d6. Black is gambiting a pawn, but likely if black is already sacrificing this pawn, they know what to do afterwards. 
So I would say it's quite impractical to be going for this line as it leads to equality at the end of somewhat forcing line. And if black already knows that, I prefer playing a sideline. And my recommendation here is to not take that pawn, leave it as a long-term weakness and play queen to d2, which often prefers to castle queen side. Over here, the most popular move is queen to b6. We're gonna be castling, for example, king to h7, guarding the pawn on h6 h4 preparing attacking opportunities on the king side up on knight to c6 now knight to h3 threatening knight to g5 remember that if we're getting knight to g5 right now they cannot be taking without paying the price there's going to be a check on the king and we're going to be winning the knight back so for example king g8 g takes f6 and we have the file to attack on as well you can imagine moves like bishop h6 are going to be incoming so when we're threatening this knight g5, black's knight likely goes back to e8. And after king b1, white enjoys more space and better pawn structure. There is a square on d5 that we want to take advantage of. There is a weak pawn on d6 that at some point is going to be dropping without tactical ramifications. We can keep improving the pawn structure with moves like f3 and white enjoys a small plus. Now as we go back after queen to d2, there's a very interesting move here for black. Queen a5, a more rare move, but engine likes it way more. Over here, we can be taking on h6, and there is quite a forcing line where white is going to be sacrificing a pawn. Remember, there is a pin, so we cannot take this. So rook to c1, rook takes c3, and we're dropping the pawn on a2. Now we're getting back and threatening moves like rook a3, so the queen goes back. And over here, after h4, I'm not going to be analyzing this position further for you. White is a pawn down, but has real attack against the black's king. h5 is coming next, and practically, I would choose white here all day long. Objectively speaking, white holds a small plus. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will incorporate successfully this variation into your repertoire. You can consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. Consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. I will see you in the next lesson.